This is video 11 in our web design in HTML series. And in our previous video, we looked at how do we create a table using table tags and rows and, and little blocks and stuff like that. And so we made a basic table, but how can we change some of the properties or the attributes of those tables? So we can learn a bit about that and how we can design our tables here. So first of all, um, I'm just going to specify the first row of our table. I'm not going to mention the whole table just for space wise, but you can imagine below this, we would have other rows and then the closing of the table tag. So we set already learned in our previous video about the border and the width so that the width is a hundred percent of the page and so on. So what other properties can we learn? Well, speaking about width, if you set the width of a table, but then you actually set an individual block, especially if it's the first block, you can say this block is 25% of the page. If you don't specify this, it'll try to divide the, the blocks up evenly or according to what is inside the blocks, if it's an image or if it's text or stuff like that. But if you actually specify the first block must always be 25%, then the, ref, le, the leftover blocks will be whatever will be divided amongst whatever's left over the other 75%. But if I want to specify the second block to be 25%, then I could have a nice little table where the first block's a quarter, the second block's a quarter, and then the third block is the rest of the half. So you can design your tables like that. If you want them evenly spaced out, um, then 33, if you've got three blocks, then 33.3% would be good for each of the blocks. And you don't even need to specify the last one because the last one will be whatever's left over. So however many blocks you've got, let's say you've got four blocks or four columns in your row, then you would make each one 25. And so that way you can space out your columns the way you want them to be, like the first block and the second block being slightly smaller than the last block, if you want to lay it out like that. So you can play around with, with the widths. And that's why I like using percentages. It makes it a lot more easier to, to navigate those different dimensions. Another property, you could change the height of the table and that will say how how much space the the table takes vertically up and down basically and then as well you can specify the height of particular rows so if you've got a height of 20 then 20 percent of that um sorry if you've got a height of 200 and 20 percent of that 200 pixel space will be covered by just the first row so you can do the exact same thing as we did with the width with the height to space out if you want um, rows to be thicker or stuff like that so you can play around with that as well um, if you want to change the color of the borders you can just say border color equals a particular color so there is that option again remember color must be american spelling so it's no u in the word border color um, and what about the color of the background? Well, this is quite nifty. So you've got BG color, again, American spelling. Now, if you place the BG color option or the attribute inside the table, it will change the entire table to that particular color. Okay. Then what, what happens if I put that exact same tag or attribute, sorry, the exact same BG color attribute inside the row? If you put it inside the row, then it will just do that row with that color. And if you take that exact same attribute and put it inside one of the, the TD tags, it will just do that particular block. Now, if you wanted the entire thing to be yellow and then one block to be white, then you could set the entire table to yellow and then just in that individual one, change that one to white. And then the individual one would override just for that block um, what it is for that particular block. So you can change the colors of the backgrounds of your little blocks in your table. And then let's talk about the we, the alignment. We've done this alignment where you can align to the center or to the left, to the right. You can set that to the row, for example, to say, oh, I want all the text in this row to be centered or centered in it. Okay, but there's another attribute for alignment and it's called V align. And V align stands for vertical alignment. How much, where, where's the alignment in respect to up and down? So there are three options for that. You could either align it to the top, so all the text will always start at the top, or you could set it to the middle, which is normally what it is by default, or you can set it to the bottom of the table or that particular block. Again, we've set this to the TR tag, which means that the entire row will follow that rule. If you put that, for example, in the TD tag, it would only apply to that particular block. So those are little things that you can do over there. Okay, now... Now, as we said, when we showed you that when we designed our tables, you'll notice there was like an inner border and an outer border. That's the basic layout of the table. Now, if you look at that little space around the cells, that little area there that in blue, that is the actual space between the cells. And we can actually modify the width of those spaces. And that is the cell spacing. So there we go. So the, that, all those areas in between, 
the lines and that, that little area, we can manipulate that by using the cell spacing property. We can make it bigger by giving it a big number, or you could make it completely disappear by making it zero or one. We'll try it out and see which one works. Another property is if you've got text or anything in your blocks, and you'll notice that there's a gap between the text and the edges, particularly on the left hand side and the top and the bottom, uh, if it's, especially if it's left aligned. So that gap over there, it's almost like the margin of that cell. You can manipulate that margin area by using the cell padding attribute and you can make it you can make it zero in other words the text is right against the edge and it's all encased around it or you can give it a bit of a margin by making the cell padding value a little bit bigger okay so let's go apply these to our current table so i've modified my table from the previous lesson a little bit i've just made it 80 percent so there we can see and i want to make these cells a little bit thinner so i'm going to change the width of the first one let's make it uh 30 percent I don't know, maybe 25. Let's try 25%. 25%. Obviously, we must put that in double quotes. 25%. Let's see what it does. Boom. It didn't actually change it much. Okay, let's make it 20%. Boom. There we go. So it got a little bit thinner. Okay, that's great. Now, I want to do the same thing to the next one. So I'm literally going to copy that and apply it to the second block for the section and make that a bit thinner. There we go. And you see it kept its, its full 80%, but it just made those a bit thinner. And then the rest of it would be the topic. You see, I just did the first block for there. And then all the other ones below it will follow suit. So you don't need to do each and every one, just those ones. So there we go. We can change the width of it. Um, you can change the height of it. We set the height of a table. Let's say if we made it like 500, which is a really big number made it 500 you'll see that it would stretch out that quite significantly i don't want it that big let's make it 300 rather i don't know that there we go so you can see the text is a little bit more spaced out and then again you can change the height of individual rows to take up so maybe we want this first row to actually have a height of 50. i don't know if that's going to make a difference let's try see if it makes it a bit thinner it made it a little bit thinner let's make it 30. I want to make that first row just a little bit thin. There we go. So you can do that and it will adjust everything accordingly. So there we go. So there's the height. Um, we spoke about the, uh, the the background color, if you remember correctly, or the border color. Sorry, let's do border color. Border color equals blue. Because at the moment it is. Let's make it red so we can actually see if it actually changes. Let's run it. Boom. And you see it's gone red. Now, the one thing I want you to take note of, the border color was the only one, uh, only attribute we've come across that actually didn't go red when we typed it in. So you might think it's a mistake, but it does actually work. So you can change the border color to red um, or to any color, but just take note that it the attribute won't turn red like all the others. And then we want to change the BG color. We want to change that to blue. Okay, well, the text is already blue. So let's change it to white so we can see it. Let's go. So the BG color, we're going to set to white. And let's refresh. And there we go. You can see it's nice and white. And if I take that property and I change just the top row, or, or just the top row, if I change the background color of the first row to yellow. So I've made the whole table white, but just this row is going to be yellow. That yellow will override the white. You can actually see the white in the background there. And I can actually even take that and put that just inside a particular, just that first block for grade. And you'll notice that just the grade block now is yellow. So I'm going to just take that back to the first row, to the row rather. There we go. So let's just do that. So there we go. So there's our background color and stuff like that. Okay, so that's great. Um, we forgot about the V alignment, the, the vertical alignment. So let's say I wanted the vertical alignment of the second row to be um, in the in the middle, or oh, it's already in the middle. Let's make it at the top. So for the second row, I'm going to say yeah, V align equals top. And by doing that, you'll notice that all the text in that first row moves to the top. Okay, and if I put it in the table, what happens if I put this in the actual table tag? V align equals top in the table tag then it doesn't actually affect you. You'll have to do each and every individual row. So that doesn't work on the table. So you'd have to do that individually. Okay, so there's our options there. Now, what else did we learn? We, oh, the gaps. I don't like these little white gaps over here. I'm going to change the cell 
spacing. Let's change it to one. Let's see what one does. If I change it to one, it, you can still see a gap. So let's change it to zero. If I change the cell spacing to zero, it's almost like it's a solid line. Okay, so that's more of what I like to see with my tables. I don't like those little gaps and stuff like that. And then last but not least, the, the gap you see there, this text is right on the edge. I want to give it a bit of a margin. So let's go add some cell padding. And let's make the padding equal to five. Let's see what that does. If I say cell padding five, there we go. You see it shifted up. It gave it a little bit of a margin at the, top, at the, the side there. Okay. So those are the attributes for our tables. You can add them and make your table look quite, quite nice and funky and play around with that. Okay, good luck. If you missed the first part of this video, go to our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, go look at the playlist and you should find it there. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.